It's a beautiful morning outside, Squeaks. It really is brighter out today. A few weeks ago, it was still dark out this early in the morning. Winter must be coming to an end, and you know what that means. Yep, spring is right around the corner. In spring, we get more sunlight and the weather warms up. My favorite part of spring is that the plants start to grow again. Well, if you really wanna watch to see how the plants start growing in the spring, I think I have just the idea. Why don't we start a vegetable garden right here at the fort? If we grow a garden, we can watch the plants at all stages of their lives and see how they grow and change over the spring, summer, and even fall. I think I know the perfect place where we could give our new little plants everything they need to grow. Let's take a look. All right. We're looking at an old planter box in the fort's backyard. It'll need a little bit of work before spring, but it will be a perfect place for our new vegetable garden. What do you think, Squeaks? <laughs> oh, you're right that there aren't any vegetable plants growing here right now. Maybe I should explain more. The plants aren't ready to grow today and we don't have seeds to plant yet. Before we start growing our new plants, we actually have a lot of tasks to do in order to get ready for spring. It's a good thing that you're getting started early. Oh, <laughs> hi Juniper. We didn't see you there. Juniper the earthworm lives in the fort's greenhouse and she helps with all the gardening that goes on around here. That's right. I heard someone talking about starting a new garden, so I thought I'd come over and see what you were planning. I'm a worm, so I love everything that has to do with soil and dirt. That includes gardening and helping plants to grow from the ground up. We're planning to grow a vegetable garden in this planter box in the backyard so Squeaks and I can study the plants as they grow this spring. Oh, that's lovely. I'm sure you'll do an excellent job taking care of these plants, but we should also make sure that this space has everything you'll need to make plants happy so they'll grow. Hmm. What do you think the plants need, Squeaks? Yes, plants need water and sunlight to grow. That's right. And since plants can't move around to find water and sunlight, they also need to be planted in a place that gets enough of those things. Before you plant anything in it, you'll want to observe your garden bed closely. How much sunlight does it get every day? Is the soil sandy or more like dirt or even hard like clay. How much water is in the earth here? I sent one of my remote control garden bots out there to help us take a look. What do you notice? Yeah, the soil is nice and dark and it's not super wet or super dry. I agree. This dark soil is full of good nutrients or things that help plants grow but you may need to water it a bit more once your plants are ready to grow. Now, different types of plants all have different needs, and they may need different amounts of water and sunlight. I'm also seeing that there's not much shade here, so you'll want to pick plants that do very well in direct sunlight. The sun will be shining right down on them for a few hours every day. You may need to water your garden on drier days, and you'll still want to pick plants that can handle a bit of rain. Wow, you know so much about gardening. Say, would you like to help us with our new garden project? There's still so much we could learn from you about plants. I would absolutely love to help out. Thank you so much for inviting me. How about we meet up soon to create a planting calendar? That's a special tool that will help us to make decisions about our plants. What do you think, Squeaks? Sounds great to us. You bring your plant knowledge, we'll bring the snack. This here, this one we got. Hmm. Oh, hi everyone. This year, we're going to grow a garden in the backyard. Squeaks and I were just looking through our seeds. Right, there are a lot of different looking seeds. Sometimes it can be hard to tell what kind of plant a little tiny seed will grow into, but we can find clues in how the seed looks. These are bean seeds. See how they are big and shiny and these are radish seeds. They are really tiny and round. Those are tomato seeds. They are also tiny, but notice how their shape is more flat compared to the radish seeds. Hold on, Squeaks. 
I am excited too, but it's still pretty cold outside. We have to plant these each at the right time and in the right place to make sure they get the best chance at growing big and strong. Every plant lives in a habitat. Sometimes we talk about how animals come from different habitats. The same is true for plants. A habitat is a place where plants and animals live. In their habitat, they can find everything they need to survive and grow. Some habitats are cold, while some are hot. Some are very dry, and others get lots of rain or snow. Some are even underwater. In other words, there are many different kinds of plants, and they can live in very different places. Depending on a seed's habitat, it might have very different needs to grow. You're right. All plants need water and sunlight to grow. But how much and when can be very different for each one. The temperature is also very important. Some plants come from hot habitats, so they need the air and ground to be warm. Their seeds won't start to grow until the soil is warm enough. When thinking about planting seeds, it can also be helpful to know if the plant it grows into is perennial or annual. Perennial plants are plants that can live for a long time. They come back season after season season like a tree. Have you seen tulips pop up from the ground as winter turns to spring? They were already planted in the soil during winter, and when spring came, they started to grow. Most plants that we grow in veggie gardens are annual plants. They have to be replanted every year. And when they get planted, some of them grow really fast, and some take a bit longer to get big and strong. We have to make sure that there is enough time for our plants to finish growing before it gets cold again again in the fall and winter. Yes, there is a lot to consider, Squeaks. So let's think about how we can keep track of what we need to do. Do you know what I think we need? I think what we might need to track all these instructions is a calendar. But first, we need to learn what each of our seeds needs to grow. Lucky thing, our friend Juniper the Earthworm, the Fort's gardener, said she'd stop by to help us make a seed calendar today. Here she comes. Hi, friends. Hi, Juniper. We're excited to plant these seeds, but we're having a little trouble figuring out when we should start. Can you help us? I'd love to. I absolutely love helping plants grow. So we need to know what the last frost date is for our area. The last frost date? That's right. A frost is when the temperature is so low that the ground and other things outside can freeze. You might see ice on the leaves and grass outside or on car windshields, and that can hurt many plants. In winter, there might be a frost every night, but as we get closer to spring, there will eventually be a time where it isn't very likely for it to freeze anymore. The last frost date can be a different day for different places. Every plant has to be planted either before or after the last frost date for your area. So let's see what we have here. Oh, radishes, yum. These need to be planted in the ground about six weeks before the last frost. They like it when it's a little chilly. But these beans need to be warmer. They should be planted after the last frost. Some plants, like tomatoes, come from places that have very long, warm growing seasons, so they need lots of time to grow. In cooler places, like where we live, they need to be planted in pots inside at least six weeks before the last frost. After the last frost, you can transplant or move them from their pots into the ground outside. Wow. How did you learn so much about plants, Juniper? Well. I've read a lot of books and practiced with a lot of seeds to learn what I know, but also it helps to look at the back of the seed packet. Seed packets usually have instructions on how and when to plant the seeds. Okay, Squeaks, now we have enough information to start working on our calendar. The first thing we need to do is mark our last frost date. Then we can count the weeks backward to find when to plant our first seeds. The last frost date for the fort should be around May 15th right here. But remember, different places have different last frost dates. You can have your grown-ups help you look up the last frost date for where you are. Okay, so what do we need to do next, Squeaks? That's right. Count six weeks back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> wow, you're right, Squeaks. We don't have a lot of time to get these in the ground. Let's plant these, and then we'll see what the other seeds need. 
Thanks for starting the garden with us, Juniper. Of course. I'm so excited for you both. Growing your own garden can be difficult, but it feels amazing to see seeds that you planted grow into beautiful plants. I'm so excited about our garden, Squeaks. And thanks to the seed calendar we made with our friend Juniper, we know the perfect time to put each of these seeds into the ground so that they can grow into plants. Soon, we'll have some great vegetable seed. You're right, Squeaks. It is surprising that these teeny tiny seeds turn into plants big enough for us to eat. Even though they're small, seeds are jam-packed with different parts that help a plant grow. And I know a way that we can take a closer look at the inside of a seed to understand how. That's right, Squeaks. These are beans. How are beans going to help us learn about seeds? Well, Believe it or not, beans are seeds. And a lot of beans are really big, which makes it easy to look at them to understand how a seed works. That's because all seeds have the same basic parts, from a big bean to a tiny radish seed. If you look closely at each part's shape or structure, you can find clues about how it helps the seed grow into a plant. Let's open up one of these beans and take a closer look inside. I soaked the beans in water overnight to make them softer so it would be easier to pull them apart. This outer part that I'm peeling off is called the seed coat. <laughs> well, Kind of like a coat you would wear outside, except that it doesn't really keep the seed warm. What do you know about the outside of a bean squeaks? <laughs> yeah, they do taste delicious when they're cooked. But what about before you cook them? How do they feel? Yes, beans are really hard and tough. If I hadn't soaked the seed first, I would have had a hard time peeling it off. The seed coat is so thick and tough because its job or function is to surround the seed and keep it safe until it's time for the seed to grow into a plant. This thick coat keeps the seed safe from many things. It holds water inside the seed so it won't dry out, and it helps protect the seed from being dropped or squished. Okay. We've covered the seed coat, but there are still two more parts to a seed. <clears throat> Do you see that, Squeaks? That part of the seed is called the embryo. And it looks like a tiny plant because it is. It's a baby plant. Like all babies, its job is to grow, and it's already started deep inside the seed. It's just waiting for the right conditions to sprout. Now. Do you see all of this other stuff inside the seed? This part of the seed is called the endosperm, and it's what the baby plant eats. Yes, the endosperm's job is to feed the baby plant until it's big enough to make food for itself. So it's a bunch of food, like a cupboard full of snacks, just for the plant. Hey there. Hi, Juniper. I heard you guys talking about growing seeds, and I couldn't help it. I just had to crawl on over. That's right, Juniper. We're learning about how seeds become plants. We were just talking about how the seed has three parts. The seed coat, the embryo, and... The endosperm. Yes, my favorite part of the seed. Jam-packed, full of food for the baby plant. We were hoping you could tell us what happens after a seed begins to grow, since you can crawl down in the soil and see it for yourself. You bet I can. Okay, let's dive in. So here's a bean, just like the ones you have right now. You can see it's just starting to grow a root, which is breaking through the seed coat. That shows our embryo is getting bigger. This process, where the baby plant starts to sprout out of its seed, is called germination. As it grows, the baby plant sends its roots down into the soil, which helps it get water. It also sends a shoot above the dirt. That's this part growing upwards. After it breaks through the top of the soil, the plant will grow leaves, to collect sunlight to make its own food. It won't need the seed to feed it anymore. And the plant grows bigger and bigger until one day it'll be able to make seeds of its own to start the whole cycle over again. Wow, Juniper. Thanks so much for showing us how a seed grows. Anytime, Mr. Brown. I'm so glad you're as excited about gardening as I am. We definitely are. Thanks for your help. You're right, Squeaks. It would be really cool to be able to see germination in action. Too bad we can't crawl down into the ground like you can, Juniper. Oh, you don't need to go underground to see a seed germinating. All you need is a sealed plastic bag and a damp paper towel. Take some of your beans and put a few of them in a baggie on the damp paper towel. That will give them water and somewhere to grow. Then we'll place them in a sunny window so that they have sunlight, and we can come by and check on them whenever we want. Without soil in the way, 
After a few days, you can watch as each seed sprouts or germinates into a plant. And you out there watching can ask your grown-ups about doing this activity at home. Okay, let's get going. This will be a great way to watch plants up close even as our garden is growing outside. That's a really good question, Squeaks. You might know that Squeaks and I have been planning a garden near the fort. We're gonna grow some amazing veggies to eat, like radishes, beans, and well, yeah, and tomatoes too. And we've learned that plants need two important things to help them grow, water and light. They also need somewhere to grow. But Squeaks came up with a really great question. All of our plants grow in dirt, or soil. How come that's not one of the things a plant needs to grow? Well, to answer that, let's start by talking about why most plants we see every day grow in soil. From small plants like grass to big plants like trees, they all grow in soil. Plants like these have roots. Most roots grow into the ground, and roots have a lot of jobs. One job that most roots do is to act like an anchor and hold the plant in place so it doesn't get blown away by the wind. Roots also help to hold the plant upright. This helps hold the plant steady as leaves stretch toward the sunlight. Roots also help the plant to get water. When we water plants, we usually pour water on the soil. The water trickles down through the soil to the roots, and that's how it gets into the plant. It's absorbed or taken up by the root. Water isn't the only thing that gets absorbed by the root. Often there are nutrients in the soil. Nutrients are things like vitamins and minerals that help the plant grow and stay healthy. Just like vitamins and minerals help people grow and stay healthy. The nutrients get mixed into the water and get taken into the plant too. Yes. It is possible for a plant to grow without soil. Healthy soil is a wonderful place for roots to grow. But if there's another way to get plants the water and nutrients they need, then the plant wouldn't really need soil as long as it was growing in a place where it was safe and secure. And we can set up a pretty simple experiment to demonstrate how. What do you think, Squeaks? Let's make a plan. First, we'll need some seeds. Not all plants will work well with this experiment, but I've read that lettuce seeds grow pretty well this way. The seeds should already be starting to grow just a little bit when we set them up. I sprouted these lettuce seeds in a sealed plastic bag with a wet paper towel, just like Juniper showed us with those beans, remember? Look, here's a teeny tiny leaf and a teeny tiny root. They're on a piece of cotton, so they stay in place. Now. Let's think of everything we know that plants need. Light, water, and nutrients. I've got water right here. The nutrients, in this case, plant food, are mixed into the water so we can't see them. Now, we need some kind of container. Oh, good idea. An empty plastic bottle from the recycling bin will work very well. And we need one more thing. We'll use this aquarium pump to blow air into the water and nutrients. That will keep everything mixed up so the growing plants get everything they need. Okay, let's put everything together. We need to carefully cut off the top of the bottle. Then we'll turn it over and fit it into the bottom part of the bottle. And let's mark a line right here so that we can see how high we need to fill the bottom part. We'll make a little hole above that line and push the tube of the aquarium pump through the hole so it will go down into the water and nutrients. We'll fill up the bottom part and then carefully put our cotton with the seeds on it so that their baby roots will get wet. And put it near a window to make sure the plants get plenty of light Turn on the pump, and now we wait. Well, we'll have to wait a couple of weeks at least. It takes time for plants to grow. Over this time, we'll need to make sure that the bottom part of the setup stays full of water and nutrients. We'll just have to check back in about four to six weeks to show everyone how they grew. Another great question. Squeaks wants to know, why would you grow plants this way if they can grow in soil just fine? Well, 
There are some plants in nature that don't grow in soil. For example, these plants grow in the tops of rainforest trees. Their roots attach right on the tree's branch or trunk. Way up high like that, they get plenty of sun and they get the water they need from the damp rainforest air. Their roots also take in nutrients they need from stuff that collects on trees' branches. Cool, right? People might also need to grow plants this way if they don't have access to soil. In many cities, for example, there's no room for a big farm, but there are lots of people who need to eat vegetables. And something similar is even used in space, on the International Space Station. It can help astronauts grow fresh food even though the soil of the Earth is way below them. But for now, Growing all this lettuce is making me think of the salad I brought for lunch. Are you ready to eat, Squeaks?